What's going on everyone, John Matrix here. Since people enjoyed the last video, I figured I'd make another one, going over a few more tips, beam. tricks, and some builds, and some item changes to make note of that have come in the most recent patch. I appreciate everyone's feedback and comments on the last video, and I hope you guys enjoy this one. So, let's get on in it. If you find you're struggling with ammo during the game, one thing you can do is come in with two weapons that use the same ammo type. Doing this will stack the overall ammo count. For example here, I came in with a Winfield and an Agant. And as you can see, I have 36 rounds with both weapons. The Nagant Brawler is a great early game pistol, giving you greater control and rate of fire over the Caldwell, while combining the melee power of the Knuckle Dusters. Meleeing with this weapon uses the same amount of stamina as the Knuckle Dusters, allowing you to kill zombies without having to switch weapons, which can save you from taking a couple hits if you have zombies aggroed on you. With the nerfs that came to the hand cannons in this patch, it's more important to make sure you have a full barreled shotgun. When first starting off and the Winfield is the only primary rifle you have, unless you have a hunter with the quartermaster perk. I recommend taking a shotgun as your primary weapon and a pistol as your secondary weapon over using the Winfield, as a full barreled shotgun has much greater range than the sawed off hand cannons. Several of the zombies have been buffed in the current patch, most notably the armors. They have increased aggro range, are faster, and much more aggressive. Shotguns are the best way to deal with them, however you can also shoot out their legs to slow them down. Be mindful when using ladders, as once you start going up a ladder you cannot jump off, making you vulnerable to being shot. Currently in game there are four ways with which you can make money. Finding all three clues, finding the boss's lair, extracting with the bounty, and team extracting with the bounty. Easiest of these is finding all three clues. Each clue gives you $25 for a total of $75. If you find yourself struggling with money, you can just find all three clues and head to an extract. Finding the boss lair grants you an additional $50. Extracting with the bounty another $150. And team extracting with the bounty adds an additional 150 for a potential total of 425 dollars that you can make each round if a team kills and banishes the boss before you find all three clues simply open the map and the location of the boss will be revealed or you can use your dark sense and look for blue vortex if you've not finished finding all three clues before this happens the rest of the clues on the map will disappear when you've taken the bounty and are heading for an extract, be mindful that the closest extract is also the most obvious one. And as oh such, God, you should be prepared for ambushes. How can I not see? Hit him. With the changes that have been made to med kits, having a vitality shot is vastly more important now. It only takes about a second to use a vitality shot compared to the five seconds it takes to use a bandage from a health kit. And the vitality shot will bring you back to full health. Whereas a bandage from the med kit will only heal your current bar back to full. The utility shot only has one use compared to the med kit that has three, so I would still recommend bringing a med kit with you for emergency uses. In my opinion, the best way to play this game right now is to seek out other teams aggressively. Not only will killing other hunters grant you more XP, but clearing the map of other teams can ensure that you can fight the boss without being interrupted. A popular strategy in the game right now is to find all the clues and camp the boss arena. As such, if you've not cleared the server of other teams, it can put you at a disadvantage when fighting the boss, especially if you're a solo. As a solo player, you need to be aggressive but cautious, as you're often going to find yourself in a 1v2 situation. If you come across an enemy team, look for an opportunity to win their separate to take them out one at a time. When you down someone in this game, that doesn't necessarily mean they're dead. If they have a teammate, they can still be revived. The only way to make sure you've killed them is to set them on fire with either a lantern or a firebomb. Alright, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment below. Feel free to like and subscribe. You can follow me over at Twitter at JohnMatrix69. I also live stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash JohnMatrix69. So feel free to stop on by and say hello. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you around next time. One of us going. Yeah, I got the hit marker and then killed him. I also got hit marker and then he died. Well, we both killed him then. Yeah, let's just drop down and just open the door and get in. Let's just kill it, yeah, it's low. Is that you? Yeah, I just dropped down here to open this door. No, something shot in there.
Could have been a bear before, it's not me. It's been a while. Really didn't die? Yeah. Or not? What? Is that a shot? It's dead, it's dead. Got him. Yep, there was another guy in here.